Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create, and we are working on Let It Snow, and this is page two, and it's also build two, page two, build two. Okay, this is a pretty straightforward page. We're gonna have a pocket and two flaps. The pocket is five by four and a half, five inches across, four and a half inches tall. You're gonna score a half inch on three of the four sides, and we're gonna mount it right here to um, the left side of the page so it's going to be away from the spine the pocket will be away from the spine um, I design them I always try to take into consideration what um, the element is doing if it's opening or closing or if I'm trying to pull something out of it and if you place your pocket away from the spine um, toward the outer side of the box or uh, book I think it's just a lot easier to get whatever's in the pocket in and out because you're not fighting with the next page or the spine so that is why I typically place my pockets either centered or toward the outside of the book. Okay, so there we go. So it's flush with the left side of the page. Okay, the next thing we have is two flaps. You're going to have a left and a right, and these are six by eight. Six inches across, eight inches tall. You're going to score a half inch on the six inch side. This is going to get mounted flush with the... Um, <clears throat> excuse me, right hand side of the page. And I should dry fit it first, make sure it's, oh, that looks good. And again, we're on page two, build two. And I mentioned it in page one, but I'll mention it again. So the page number is self-explanatory, but the build is the sequence in which I actually um, cut through the designer paper. So for page one, build one, that was actually the first time I cut through the designer paper. And I will mention that as I go along because I don't always um, cut into the design paper um, in the same sequence as the pages. <clears throat> So hopefully that makes sense. And I, the reason I don't always do it in the order of the pages is it just, for me, it just makes paper planning easier. So let's see. I think I might modify this now that I'm looking at it. I like to have a little gap here instead of just having this go straight down because it is going to have a little trouble getting up and over the edge of the pocket. So I think it's going to be one at six by eight and the other one's going to be uh, five and a half by eight. <clears throat> okay, both of these you'll score a half inch. So this one's going to be five and a half by eight. The one I installed is six by eight. Now what I'm going to do is I am going to hang my hinge off this page take the backing off and close it, and it's gonna find its location naturally. And that way I know both of them are gonna close over on each other. <clears throat> Before you do that though, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that up and down, it's flush. So I'm gonna turn it sideways so I can hang on to both sides, gently close it, and then go from the center out. There we go. That's that. So now we need something to keep this closed. We're going to use a magnet. <clears throat> Using my white tape. There we go. Close it. Now that's in place. Cool, 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 cool. Okay, so I've got a couple of pieces uh, trimmed out and ready to go. Let's see, here we go. This doesn't go there. This goes here. I think I need to trim it a, a little bit more. And as I'm sitting here, I'm, I'm realizing I haven't inked my edges, so I'm gonna take a quick break um, go do a little bit more trimming and inking so that when I come back, we'll just be installing the designer paper. <clears throat> Stop. Okay, everyone. Um, 
I got a couple of things organized, so we're ready to start decorating uh, page two. Okay, so um, this pattern is from the 8x8 collection, and so I've just cut it in half and I'm alternating the pattern. And so we'll have an insert here too. I think I already told you the pocket size, but I'll say it again. It's five by four and a half, five by four and a half, five inches across. You're going to score a half inch on either side and then on the bottom. So a half inch on three of the four sides. And I left my glue on my other table. <clears throat> okay, here I am, I'm back. <clears throat> I hope everybody's doing well. We're having a beautiful day here in San Diego. Try to get a couple of things done this morning. And my goal is to wrap this project up today. And that means I'm going to be at this for a while. And today being Tuesday, October 12th. Oh, and I wasn't sure in my last video I was jibber-jabbering. And then I did a, um, <clears throat> a reveal for the new... Uh, Blue Fern Yuletide, which is really pretty. I'm excited about that collection. I am going to do uh, a project with that, and that'll be my next project. <clears throat> so as soon as I finish this one up, later on this week, I'll be starting that. And I can tell you right now that it's going to be an 8.5 by 8.5 by 2.5 with four pocket pages. I haven't designed the flaps yet, but I am going to use that size. And um, I think I might even make a box for it. I've already had a request from somebody to build a box for the 8.5 by 8.5 album. So this might be a good one to do it on. It really depends on uh, how much paper I have left. So we'll see. Uh, but definitely going to do an album. Okay, so now let's get started on the inside. I've chosen this. It is from the 12 by 12 collection. There's a ton of cut aparts in this um in this release, which makes it really ideal for um, all you card makers. You're gonna have a lot of different options if you don't wanna make a mini album with it. <clears throat> so that's exciting. If you haven't yet, go on over to Facebook, uh, Scrap and Create group. Um, we've got a group of folks over there, and it's actually um, uh, a worldwide collection of folks who contribute to that site um, and provide a lot of great projects and inspiration. So check that out. I think uh, I think if you're watching this channel, you're going to enjoy what you see over there. Uh, we've got a great group of people. We only ask that you post projects that uh, feature items that we sell and um, and also no um, promotions um, as that site is actually linked to our shop but um, it's it's a good it's a good place to go and there's some other um, uh, good Facebook groups where you can get inspiration the mini album addicts is a really good one. So I encourage you guys to join those groups and get lots of inspiration. You'll find other makers there. It seems as though it's getting harder and harder to find the free tutorials. They're out there, but I think most people are selling their tutorials now. Um, and there are some really good designers um, if you're okay with purchasing a tutorial. Um, Memories by Leah is without a doubt one of my favorite. and um, I I think our styles are similar. She does some really good designs. I she's probably my favorite. I'd have to say. Anyway, um, check her out. Uh, she has I think a Facebook page, and then she used to only do PDF tutorials, but I think she's doing video tutorials now. Of course, they're for sale on her Etsy shop, but she's worth every penny. <clears throat> My, my only challenge with her is a lot of times when I see an album and I really like it of hers, it's already, the paper's already pre-aged and sometimes it's hard to get. So 
but her but her designs are exquisite. Okay, I'm going to trim out a few things since I'm color blocking here. I have to trim these by hand. So I've chosen this, which is from the 12 by 12 collection. I really like these birds. And I'm going to feature this pattern um, on a separate page. So I didn't want to have it on the inside. The way I like to think of my albums is the inside is where the photos go and the outside is is more of the design statement. So I'd like to keep the inside a little bit tamer, easier to put a photo on, not having to work around um, strong images. <clears throat> and because I'm color blocking, I'm uh, just marking this on either side and then we'll trim it up and, and put it down. So I am going to get up and my trimmer's on the other side of the room. I'm gonna trim this, I'm gonna pause here. When I come back, these will all be trimmed out. All right, everyone. I've got these trimmed out, so we're ready to lay them down. Uh -uh. I really like this red paper. <clears throat> and I like the traditional Christmas colors. By the way, the strip I used here in the middle, the green one, is um, two inches wide. So it's two inches wide. So if you want to get the same look, that's basically what I did. And you know, you don't have to. This could just be a full panel of the red. I like color blocking. I think visually it adds um, a lot of interest to your book without adding a lot of um, bulk or complexity in flaps. And um, color blocking, uh, I think is very easy to do with Graphic 45. It's harder to do with some of the more muted patterns that you see in Stamperia. Possible, but it, it starts to get a little, what I call muddied. There's no crispness to it, like you see here, because there's such strong contrast between the patterns, red and green. But if you're trying to color block with two beige patterns, it something gets lost, or even two blue patterns. Something gets lost when it's monochromatic. <clears throat> okay, and I think you can see it's very easy to visualize a photo here because it's not gonna be competing with a strong image, right? This panel here is, um, I wanna verify that. I set it before and then I trimmed this down. This, this panel, is six by eight, this is five and a half by eight. So you're gonna have um, a little gap over here on this side, which I like, cause I don't want this uh, to be interfering with the hinge. So see, so if this is six inches, I'm gonna say that it's actually five and a half inches finished. Yeah, so you could easily put a uh, four by six here, two four by fours. Um, it's, it's pretty easy to imagine a photo here or two. And let's see, this is one, two, three, four, yeah. So this is four, this is probably four by five, not four by six, so that would work really well. You could put smaller images here. And in the center, it is five and a half inches, so you could do a five by seven in the center if you wanted. So you can see there's lots of opportunities for photos. Okay, I'm gonna trim out um, the designer paper that I've selected here, and I'll be back in a moment, and we'll do the installation. Okay, so I've chosen um, the flip side of, it's the same, um, it's actually the same pattern as this and it's from the 12 by 12. So on this side I put three eighths of an inch um, so it'll fit between the pocket and the flap and then a half inch trim on this side. Okay. And then by putting this half inch trim here and then also on the other side next to the pocket, it sort of brings the pattern together like a frame. <clears throat> and so we'll lay down this strip next. That was a little bit too much glue. 
And you want to make sure you either get under your flap or you leave enough space, which is what I'm doing, that when you open your flap, it's not trying to lift your strip. <clears throat> and actually that, I wish I would have made this a little bit wider because that's a lot of black in between, but it's okay. I'm going to be happy with it. And then this is going to go on like so. Okay. I've already inked it. And so once we do this, we, we only have one more oops, panel to cover, and that's the B side of the top flap. This is 8x8. Eight eight. Okay, there we go. So now the last panel is right here. Everything else is done. So let's get going on that. All right, everyone. So I've decided to pull this pattern back in, which is the same thing that we've used on the center. And it's gonna go right here. And again, we're on page two. And as it turns out, this is also build two, page two, build two. And uh, that means, of course, page two is self-explanatory, but uh, build two means that it is the second page that I actually um, cut through the designer paper. So you should absolutely have the same, if you're building it in the order that I'm um, building, which may or may not coincide with the page number, but in this case it does, um, then you should absolutely have the same scraps, um, you know, pieces left after you've trimmed through stuff that I do. <clears throat> but it's also, you know, perfectly fine to make substitutions that, you know, that appeal to you more. You may actually have already have some photos in mind for your album, and that may, you know, uh, taking that into consideration may change how you do your uh, color coordinations. So that is uh, page two. I'm going to do a quick insert and it is going to be three and three quarters by seven and three quarters. Okay, I'm going to do a little bit of color blocking and I have taken this off of the 12 by 12. Um, the the cut aparts page, um, it has um, all of these linear um, patterns, um, which you can use on your border. So it came right off the top of here, trim that out. And because I'm color blocking, I'm gonna have to adjust my my uh, cut trim, uh, I think, uh, just barely. This is the same pattern that I used on the left and right here. <clears throat> and because I have a busy pattern on the back of the pocket, I wanted to tone it down for the insert. So that's my thought process there. Okay. And I use my corner chomper, um, the stub. <clears throat> okay. I need, yeah, I need to make this. Mm -hmm. We're wrapping up. This insert makes... Uh, is the last part of page two. <clears throat> oh, isn't that pretty? <laughs> I like it. Oh, look at that. I need to actually trim my black cardstock. I thought this piece was a little bit bigger, and that's fine. I'm going to trim it to fit, and you, you guys might be coming up with the same problem if you're cutting through your paper the same as me. So I'm going to adjust the, the height. I said it was seven and three quarters. It looks like it's going to be seven and a half. And I'll, re I'll let you know what that is in just a second when I trim it. <clears throat> Mm 
we're going to go with <clears throat> three and three quarters by seven. And I'm going to redo the corners and hopefully, oops, that was kind of sticky. It landed on top of my coffee cup. Thank goodness it didn't go in. Um, and hopefully this is just a matter of inking and laying down. Oh, now I need to trim this off. Now, if you need to trim your designer paper, don't trim off the bottom, trim off the top, right? Because you've already got, if you're like me, you've already got your corners in. So I could have made it to fit perfectly, but I adjusted the trim size so that you've got, um, that you landed on um, a nice round number, uh, seven and a half instead of seven and five eighths. Oh, which would have made it fit perfectly, but you can go either way. So it looks like I need to take off just about an eighth of an inch. Let me take one more trim because I'm trying to be careful. Yep, a little bit. <clears throat> Okay, so um, I've got that now where I want it. This piece right here is one inch. This is, I don't know what it is, but I just picked a pattern. So you just want something that's gonna coordinate if you use one of your border strips. And um, looking at it, it looks like it might be um, three eighths. And then this is trimmed to fit. And in this case, it turns out it's six inches. And of course, all of those need to be adjusted if you're doing something larger than a 16th of an inch border, which is what I do. And that's part of the reason I don't put the designer paper cuts um, is some people like an eighth inch, some people like a quarter inch, I like a 16th. Um, so if you like a 16th, your designer papers are gonna need to be one eighth inch shorter and narrower and then that and centered and then you get your um, I think I over trimmed it again. I got a little bit more black down here than I want, so I'm just going to hand trim that. And when I say hand trim, that means I'm just going to use my I love this tool. Um, I didn't think I would, but I really like it. It's easier for me to use than the traditional the traditional one, um, and I find I'm it's more precise. Um, I don't know what it is, but I, I really like it. We do sell them in our shop, um, but they're easy to find in general. Okay, I like that better. I'm gonna redo my corners, take a little more out. There we go, that's looking good. There we go, lovely, lovely, that look good. Oop. And it's, you could also, if you've got some scrap here, use it up here. And then see, there's the pattern on this eight by eight. So that is our insert. <clears throat> I'm going to further embellish this, but I don't know how yet or what I'm gonna do, but you're gonna see that in the walkthrough. And I'm most likely going to put an ephemera card here, uh, paper, cardstock backed. I just don't know which ones yet. <clears throat> A lot of times I wait to do that because it really depends on how the rest of the pages come together. So that is it for page two, build two. And uh, if I further embellish it, you will see it um, in the walkthrough, okay? And I, I think I actually like the seven and a half better than seven and three quarters. Um, so the next one I do will be the same thing. Even if the scraps will work for the larger size, I'm gonna um, make it seven and a half, seven and three quarters. And I'm just adjusting my cut list as we're going. So I've done that. So we're all set. Hey, thanks everybody for tuning in. This is Daphne from Scrap and Create. If you could, it really helps us if you like and leave a comment. Um, by liking and leaving comments, it um, helps It helps us on the business side because um, YouTube uses that as part of their algorithm to offer this up as a recommended video for like-minded people. So if you could do that, you know, it, it doesn't have to be much, just... 
hey, I like it or good job or thanks, anything, you know, anything you put in there. They don't read the comments, obviously. They're just looking to see how engaged the audience is. And then that helps promote us with other, like I said, like-minded um, uh, crafters. So thanks, again. thanks everyone again. This is Daphne from Scrap and Create. I'll be back soon with page three.